Hello, and welcome to our final EM presentation using solenoids as a dynamic stabilization system. Since this is a two part project, let's do a quick review of our first project. In our last project, we worked out the theoretical relationships for the physical system that we're hoping to build, as well as the mathematics behind that system. Here we have an image of the basic physical system that we were hoping to create during this project. Now, the key point to take away from this is the orientation of the magnet with respect to the solenoid. Here we have the one pole of the magnet facing directly toward the opposite pole of the solenoid, and the two are constrained onto a single axis. Now, the key variable of the mathematics is the mechanical force actually generated by the solenoid, which is a function of the magnetic field of that solenoid. And it's represented by this equation here, where the mechanical force is the gradient of the magnetic moment of the spherical magnet, the permanent magnet, dotted with the magnetic field of the solenoid itself. Now our stretch goal for this project was to create an entire mechanical control system whereby varying the current flowing into the solenoid, we could actually control the location of the magnet within the tube that it was attached to as long as the magnet was on the same center axis as the solenoid, or by varying the pitch of the tube they were both attached to and varying the current in the solenoid as a function of that pitch, we would actually be able to maintain a constant position of the magnet regardless of orientation. However, unfortunately, we were not able to accomplish this for several different reasons. The main reason being... Not exactly. In order to create a solenoid that actually has enough power to control the position of a magnet, if the magnet is a non-trivial distance outside of the actual range of the solenoid, that solenoid needs to be incredibly powerful, and solenoids of that power generate an extreme amount of heat. In order to actually create a solenoid that would have satisfied this operation, we would have most likely melted our entire apparatus. Instead, we decided to develop a smaller scale proof of concept model to demonstrate the principles that would apply in our full control system. In order to determine the mechanical force generated by our proof of concept model, we secured the magnet to the surface of a balance and then varied the height of the solenoid above it in order to determine the mechanical force generated by the solenoid on the magnet as a function of the distance between the two objects. Notice how as the height of the solenoid increases, the weight reading on the scale also increases. Now we expected the force to decay as a function of 1 over the distance between the solenoid and the magnet cubed, and by graphing the data that we received and comparing it to other theoretical approximations and magnetic fields, we were able to actually validate that it does in fact decay as 1 over the distance cubed. The validation of this relationship does confirm that it is possible to control the position of a magnet by varying the current flowing through the solenoid as a function of the angle of the pitch of the axis between the magnet and the solenoid. Thank you all for listening, and a little piece of advice, if you're planning to work with solenoids, just don't burn the building down.